I would like to share with you something very useful that you can add to your toolbox of card techniques. And so what I'm looking at here is a situation where uh, the top half of a packet consists of cards that you want to keep together kind of as a block. You're not worried about the order, but just keeping those together like these face cards. And then the bottom half of the packet consists of a different group of cards that you're hoping to keep together. Here it's the number cards. Okay, so there's countless applications of this, but I decided to go with a division of face cards and number cards. Now we can go ahead and just randomly stack these. Okay, now one way that I've already shown you that you can use to preserve that division of the packet is you can perform any overcoding. Now overcoding is where you deal out 50% or more of the cards. Now remember we have 10 cards, so if you deal out between 5 and 10 cards and then drop the rest on top, you will preserve that division. Okay, so we'll still have um, all of the number cards grouped together, either at the top or the bottom, and the same thing for the face cards. Okay, so we can deal out 8 of them even. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay. So that also preserves these two blocks. Now I may move the blocks around and move the cards around within each block, but we're not so interested or worried about that. Okay. Now what I'm going to show you today is a technique that I've recently discovered that accomplishes the same thing, but seems to be mixing the cards quite thoroughly. Okay. And so I have it listed over here. Now, by the way, the T stands for top half of the packet. B stands for the bottom half of the packet. Okay, so like I started with face cards and number cards. So what I'm showing you here are different pairings of shuffles that will preserve those blocks. Okay, so for example, if you perform a Klondike shuffle, this is where you just take the top and bottom cards off as one. Okay, set those down and then follow it with a left-right shuffle or an up jog, even or odd, you're going to preserve those blocks. So for example, why don't we just do a left-right and the spectator can decide, okay, how should we stack these? Left on, right on left. Okay, very good. Well, as you can check, we've preserved those two separate blocks of cards within this packet, okay? Or if we perform a Klondike, Okay, followed by an up jog, even or odd. It will have the same effect, okay? So you can have the spectator tell you kind of how to stack these. The left position cards or the right. Maybe they'll say right on left, okay? So the key is you would perform several of these in succession, giving the illusion of mixing the cards when in fact you know quite a bit about the organization of this packet. And then to add just one more, oh, by the way, the bar here, like B bar, it means the bottom half, but the cards have been reversed in order, okay? So like right here, if we do a Klondike followed by a left-right shuffle in which we stack the right pile on top of the left, it will take the original bottom and move it to the top, but the cards within that original bottom half will be reversed in order, and then the top half will just be moved to the bottom. Now, kind of the assumption here is we're not so worried about the cards being rearranged within the respective blocks. We just want to keep the blocks intact, that the top half is of one kind, the bottom half is of the other. And all of these will do that just fine. So for example, if you had a royal flush on top in clubs and a royal flush in hearts on the bottom, and you did all of these overcoatings and then any of these in any quantity, you'll preserve the fact that the top half will be one of these two royal flushes and the bottom half will be the other one. Okay, and then I just wanted to quickly add that beyond just the Klondike shuffle, you can actually perform instead what's called a Bessie 1-1, which is a different way of mixing the cards. It really does give you a different ordering. This is where you take the top card, single card is one, and then the bottom, top, bottom, top, bottom, top, bottom, top, and then the last one goes on top. Okay, and then follow it up with any of these. So maybe we'll just do a, a left right in which we stack, let's say the right pile on top of the left. The spectator decides that, that's really important. Okay, 
and we have still preserved the division of the cards into one half being face cards and the other half being number cards. Okay, so this is kind of a utility move, something to add to your toolbox of card manipulation, wherein you know enough about the ending structure of the packet that you can finish in the way that you hope. So anyway, I thought I would just share, share this with you. This is another way to preserve separate halves of a packet where those halves are important to keep together. Okay, so thank you for watching and take a look at other videos on the Absolute Math Magic channel.